I have a question for you. Which out of these three photos is the odd one out? Have you got an answer? Well, the correct answer is that it's this one, because this image was taken by a human being, and the other two images were generated from text prompts using a new image generation AI called DALI 2, which just came out in April of this year. And these images are impressive. If you just saw them while quickly scrolling through social media, you'd probably think they were real. Obviously, if you zoom in, you'll start to see some weird artifacts, like the strand of hair merging into the glasses, and these absurdly tall and skinny books behind the dragon. Some images have a lot more uncanny artifacts than others, or just look completely cursed, like these, which easily give them away as being a strange AI creation, but others look pretty seamless. And excitingly, but also somewhat scarily, the AI can also be pretty good at creating images in various art styles too, like these. Later on in the video, I'm going to explore in a lot of detail what the many possible implications of this technology are for visual artists. But first, I'll answer the question, how on earth does the AI make these images? Here we have some images of raccoons wearing colourful turtleneck sweaters. They were made by typing in a prompt into DALI and then waiting just a little bit for them to be generated. That's it. And you might assume, like I originally did, that the AI is kind of taking a bunch of Google images and just averaging them. You'd think that if I typed in, happy raccoon wearing a colourful turtleneck sweater, then the AI would go, okay, well, I'm going to search Google for some raccoon images and then some turtleneck images, and then I'm just going to cut and stick them together. But that is not what the AI is doing. It's actually doing something way cooler, which is actually understanding what a raccoon is and then making one up. So basically, DALI 2 is a neural network they trained it on a bunch of images from the internet with accurate text descriptions available. They feed thousands of images along with their accurate text descriptions into the algorithm, and the algorithm gradually learns to associate the text with certain patterns of pixels in the images. So imagine you feed it a bunch of images of sheep with the text description, sheep stood in a field. Well, the algorithm can eventually learn that when it sees the word sheep, it's also going to see in the image this quote-unquote sheep pattern, and will learn to heavily associate the two things. But it's not that simple, because sheep are three-dimensional objects, and they're going to look very different depending on the angle from which you view them. So the algorithm has to spend all of this time painstakingly learning all of the different variables which make up what a sheep is and what a sheep is not. Basically, it's learning what the essence of sheepness is. And then when you ask it to create an image like a sheep wearing a funny hat on the moon, it's not going to take an image of a sheep and then edit it to your liking. There is no image of a sheep. It's drawing from its knowledge of what a sheep is to create a sheep. And if this explanation didn't make much sense to you and you want a more detailed explanation, then I'm going to link a really good Vox video in the description that you can watch. Now let's play a game. I've selected some of the most convincing images I've seen come out of DALI 2 and I'm going to show you a series of 10 pictures and you're going to guess whether they were generated by DALI 2 or whether they were created by human artists and photographers. Please feel free to write down your answers in the comments section and tell me your score at the end. Okay, so here's our first image. Now, is this a piece of photo-bashed concept art that I just found on the ArtStation trending page? Or was this generated by AI? 
if you guessed that a person made this, then you'd be right. A person did make this. Now we have this neon mug design that I could have just found available to print on a variety of products on Redbubble. Or I might not have. What do you think? If you guessed that this is man-made, then you'd be wrong. This was made on Dali too. What about this piece of art depicting a gladiator in a coliseum who just slayed a dinosaur? Is this something I just found by artist David underscore Kravisker underscore design on the trending page of DeviantArt or did I just make that up? This one surprisingly was made by Dali too as well. What about this cute sloth character? Is this a screenshot that I just found of Pete the Sloth from an old laptop advert in the UK? Or is Pete computer generated? The sloth isn't called Pete, it's actually generated by a user on Dali. What about this image of Zendaya? Did I just scroll for an awfully long time on Google to get an obscure Zendaya image? Or is this not a real photo? This one is actually kind of a trick because it's not computer generated but it's not Zendaya either. It's actually a photo I took at a wax museum, hence the blurred wall behind her where I had to hide the wax museum logo. Is this next one either a super old drawing by the amazing digital artist Saoxin, or did I just make that up? Not the part about Saoxin being amazing obviously, but just the fact that he made it. This art was made by Saoxin, way back in 2009 on DeviantArt. What about this image? Did this anime girl just come up on my Instagram feed as a sponsored post from an artist and I screenshotted it, or is it completely fake? It's completely fake. I mean, just look at the hands. I've noticed that just like real artists, AI seems to really struggle with hands. Number eight is this photo of some fields that I might have taken while out on a group hike a couple of months back. Or it might just be a very well generated hill. Which is it? This is a real hill. But is this also another photo of a different group hike that I did while on holiday a couple of years ago? Or is it fake? If you answer that this photo is real, you would be wrong. It's fake. And finally, we come to number 10. So this is your last chance to take what you might have learned and see if you can guess if this is AI generated or not. Is this a real person? Is this a real model photo shoot that I just found on Google or not? For the final point in our game, if you answered that it is fake, then you would be correct. So that concludes our little game. Please tell me your score out of 10 in the comments section, and if you had any strategy for figuring out what was real and what wasn't, please let me know what your strategy was. But why did we play that game? Well, it's practice, you're probably going to be playing that game a lot in the next few years. Photoshop and filters have been around for a while now, and the first recorded incidents of people retouching photos came from the 1960s, just a few decades after the camera was invented. However, previously, photoshopping a convincing image required some level of technical skill. However, with a technology like this, it won't. More people than ever will be able to make convincing fake photos easily. And by the way, Dali 2 literally takes about 10 seconds to a minute to generate a batch of pictures from your prompts. So expect a lot more fake news stories coming out in the next few years. And if you know a thing or two about deep faking as well, then you'll know that fake media is soon going to get a lot worse. It's absolutely mind-blowing how fast we got to this point. 
You might remember when Google Deep Dream came out in 2015, it didn't look that great and they haven't really improved it much since, so it still doesn't look great. Then sometime later we had this person does not exist.com, which came out in 2019. You can endlessly refresh the page to create more and more faces of people who aren't real. When it came out, it went viral, but there were a lot of those weird AI artifacts that I mentioned earlier. Specifically, there were often weird teeth and weird ears and weird hair and weird backgrounds. It's since been improved a bit, but it still has some strange artifacts. Then in 2021, just a year ago, there was the release of NVIDIA Canvas. This allows you to paint with a grass brush or a water brush or a mountain brush, and you could put it all together to make your own custom photorealistic scene. And it's crazy because just a year ago, I thought that that was really cool. In a couple years, maybe we could make our own custom images and they'd actually look kind of good. And then just one year later, we have Dolly 2 and it is scarily good. Look at how rapid that advancement was and imagine how rapid it will continue to be. And then Google is apparently working on its own text to image AI called Imagine, which is supposedly worlds better than Dali already. And Dali just came out two months ago. I think a really big issue going forward is going to be copyright laws because it's kind of iffy to determine who actually owns what the AI comes out with. There's also issues going on wherein there is a lot of censoring happening because people don't want people to be able to create images that have horrific scenes and lots of gore, nudity and possibly racist images as well. So these might slow the release of programs like this by a little bit. Now we move on to the question which I think the reason why I am so fascinated by it is because I am an artist myself and that is if these machines can make art then what does that mean for the visual art industry and human artists going forwards? I've actually recorded a very long and detailed discussion detailing my thoughts about this, but since it is quite long, I have decided to split it off into another video or else this video would be like a podcast basically. So if you'd like to discuss that and join me in talking about that, then I will be releasing another video shortly. I hope that you enjoyed this video hope that it was informative and thank you so much for watching. If you did enjoy it, I would really appreciate you letting me know by leaving me a comment or giving me a like or even subscribing because I am trying my hardest to grow this channel in 2022. So thank you and goodbye. I will see you in the next video.